You don't need trend spotters to tell you, because it's not hard to see, that our world cities have mainly one way to grow, and that's vertically. For a century, high rises were made of concrete and steel. Now urban jungles are made of glass, but what do they conceal? By the 1990s, the spirit of public housing had turned into a ghost, and the commodified glass condo rose as the new observation post. All over Asia, pop-up cities, megacities, and super cities increase in relevance, while next-gen slum clearance sweeps through the developing world's informal settlements. Urban slums, once seen as worthless, are now eyed with speculation. The rich return downtown and push the poor out into peripheral high-rises. A new form of deportation? In New York, even old concrete blocks are the target of speculators requiring only a bank's persuasion. A famous fight happened like this in the building where hip-hop was invented. The tenants fought off speculators' attempts to have gentrification augmented, forgetting all the signs as the middle class declines that most of the new vertical urban future aligns. Only for the very rich or the very poor, the city ceases to be accessible to all for sure. The new luxury high-rise places are getting smarter, greener, taller, while the new low-rent trend downtown is to make the units smaller and smaller and smaller. Some critics say these micro-apartments of less than 300 square feet are another way of confining the young, the lonely, the cash poor into prison cell-like retreat. Remember the tenements? This rampant privatized vertical development in the future when it comes, such buildings made of glass and material that hardly lasts might well too turn into slums. Not all innovative vertical communities are designed from the top down. A vertical squat in Caracas is all the social features of a functioning small town. You know, 80% of Singapore residents continue to live in public housing proving that public concerns for citizens can still be arousing. And Hong Kong's standard harmony blocks, which always rise to the 40th floor or more, are now being considered in China, where surprisingly, public housing didn't really exist before. The legacy of mass housing, especially across Europe, holds some hope. Concrete blocks can be renovated, linked to the city, and become kind of dope. Scanning the centuries and the history of the high-rise, one sees social patterns emerge, disappear, and reprise. Vertical living can be modest, affordable, and humane in the right conditions. It just needs us to think about what our urban planet can be and to redefine our ambitions. 